Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lokis. It's been a while and I'm sorry about that. I've been up to one or two things, but Lokis is back. Yeah. So today's tutorial will be on how to make an half the shoulder jumpsuit for a girl of seven, but a stature could pass for a girl of five, yeah, because she has a small stature. And I'm going to show you the required measurement step by step on how to make this. Whenever I'm making a girl's clothes, I'm so excited, even though I don't have one. But never mind, that doesn't stop me from making outfits for girls. So I'll be making use of this fabric I have here. It's so beautiful, yes, and it's gonna come out nice. So please, if you are here for the first time, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Lokis once again. And please make sure you subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Lokis Signatures, and on Facebook, Sewing Innovations. You will learn a lot from me. So right now, let's go to the work table to get started. This is the outfit we are about to make. You can see it's an up the shoulder. So it's divided into three, the trouser, the top, and then the cape. So what are the required measurements needed? You need the round the shoulder measurements. So that is around the shoulder from here to here. For height is 28 inches. Then our chest measurement is 22 inches around the chest. We don't need the waist measurements. We are going to be using the hip measurements. So her hip measurement is 24 around a hip, the strongest part of the hip for height is 24. A uh, ankle opening around here, the opening here is 10 inches for her. A vertical waist measurement is 10 inches. What do I mean by that? From the nape of her neck to her waist is 10 inches. Then a crotch measurement is actually seven, but I could use eight. How do you determine that? Ask the child to sit on a flat surface, then measure from her waist to the surface of the chair or whatever she's sitting on whatever you get you write it down so for her it is actually seven inches but i could make use of eight so for her it is seven inches then the length of the trousers that is from here from the waist down to the hem of the trouser for her it is 25. so let's go over to the pattern paper this is the pattern paper i'm working with the first thing we are going to be drafting is the trouser before we move to the upper part so the length of the trouser based on the measurement I have here is 25. So this is the waistline, the starting point. So I have 25 till the hem, as you can see. So this is the waistline and then the hem. The next measurement will be the crotch measurement from the waist for height to seven inches. But I can use it depending on what I want to use, how free I want it to be. So from the waist down here, I have seven inches. So this is a crotch line. So the next thing I'm going to do very fast is to insert the waist measurement. But here we don't need the waist measurement. Why? Because she's just going to put it on all from the from her legs and then just wear it up. So it's as easy as that. So it is not required except you want to have a zipper, which is fine. So I'll be making use of a hip measurement here. A hip measurement is 24 inches. So I'm going to divide that by four. When I divide that by four, I'm going to have six inches. So instead of inserting six inches, I'm going to add some ease to that. Despite using the waist, uh, the hip measurement, I'm going to have some ease. So instead of six inches, I'm going to add extra one to one and a half is fine. Let me just add one and a half to a quarter of a hip measurement. So that makes it seven and a half. So I'll come over to the crotch line to measure seven and a half again. Then make a straight line. Having done that for the crotch, now I'm just going to make that two inches is fine. Between one and a half to two inches is okay. Can you see on that line? I'm just going to mark two inches. As you can see. Then I'm just going to hold it down the line. So the crotch is formed, as you can see. Then now I'm going to the hem. From here, a handle opening is 10 inches. So we need half of that for this, unlike this, whereby we divided it by 4. So 10 divided by 2, that will give me 5. So I'm going to insert five here. But before you insert it, what I'm going to do now is this. I'm going to measure just between three quarters to one inch 
from the edge here can you see after that will i measure five inches so can you see what i have the next thing is to connect from this to the crotch line or about half an inch or three quarter below the crotch line let me see what i have here then coming here you just use your ruler to connect it straight or if you have a pant curve you could just use your pant curve so that is it you don't have just make a straight line so the trousers is formed then i'm going to include that of the back together because i don't want to start cutting it differently what do i do all i have to do is to extend this line so that will be for the back just measure one inch after that we are still going to have some allowance on our fabric so just come down about quarter of an inch just link it up so that will be for the back and then just going to connect it straight to that point so now we have the front and the back so we'll be cutting the back first before the front so let me just cut that out quickly And let's quickly get over with the top it is time for us to draft the top now from my measurement here a vertical waist measurement from the nape of our neck to our waist is 10 inches as i have it here but remember it's an off the shoulder and for a child it shouldn't be too off so i'm just going to remove two from that measurement so instead of 10 i'm going to make it a and for the fact that it's a jumpsuit you want some allowance here you know to have a little fold at the waist area so I'm going to make sure uh, make use of eight inches as I have here. Now, going over to the um, waist, you don't need to stress yourself. What you have to do is this: whatever measurement you have here is what you will make use of. And I have seven and a half, so I'm just going to mark seven and a half from the edge. So that is that then to the chest measurements because it's going to have an elastic because of the cape so we need to have some allowance to that too or better still you could just make use of this same measurement you have make use of it there here now a chest measurement is 22 when you divide that by four you'll be having five and half so this is five and half from the edge but i'll be adding the same one and a half inches i had it to the hip measurement here to this same measurement so when i had one and a half to that i'll be having seven inches so i can make use of the seven inches or just make use of the same seven and a half so it depends let me just make use of the seven and a half but you can make use of the divided chest measurements so the next thing now is to start our ham hole for the ham hole measurement i'll be making use of three and a half between three to three and a half is just fine then coming to the upper parts just deduct two inches and you can just connect that either side of the ham hole curve or you could just draw a straight line or if you don't want that you could just have if you want a little bit of curve you could have something like this so it's a pain so we are true with that i'm now going to cut it off the patterns are ready now i'll just have to cut on the fabric so you can make use of either of the two um, The 
pattern for the hog to shoulder is ready except for the cape you can see it's pretty easy but if you want a palazzo trousers all you have to do is to just deduct about one inches from here and just make it straight down that's all if you don't want it fitted like this so that it all depends on your preference so we are going to cut this out on the fabric looking at it i just folded the fabric and i placed my pattern on it so i'm just going to add half an inch seam allowance all around but at the upper part here i'm going to add one inch to the upper part why to the lower part here i'm going to add one and a half inches so i'm just going to highball it but you take your time to add your seam allowance to it I've added the required seam allowance, one and a half inches to the lower part, and then half an inch all around. So what I'm going to do now is to trim this very one so that I can cut out for the front panel. You can mark it so that you know the difference. So now I'm going to set this aside to cut for the front. All the patterns has been cut out. So first let me start from the trousers. So as you can see, half an inch all around, except for the lower part which I added one and a half inches. So this is for the front. This is for the back. As you can see, so this is one inch longer. So half an inch except the lower parts. So going over now to the cape and the top. So this is what I have for the top. So the lower part half an inch, the side half an inch, the ham hole. Then the upper part I had to add one and a half inches to that. Why? Because it's going to have an elastic. So by the time we fold in half an inch, then we fold in um, the remaining one inch. That will be for the elastic. So that was why I added one and a half to the upper part, as you can see. So opening it up. This is what I have, can you see, for the front and the back. So the two of that unfold. That's for the front. Now going over to the cape. The round shoulder of this girl is 28 inches. So what you can just do for that, that's, I'm talking about the circumference now. You can just double that, meaning you cut out 28 inches for the front and 28 inches for the back. But here I just have 26 so it depends on the amount of fabric you have. I, though I have enough fabric, but I just reduce it. Instead of 28, I just made it 26 for the front, 26 for the back. Now, going over to the length of the cape. I want the length of the cape to be 4 inches. But because we'll be attaching this to the front, I had to have this extra 1.5 inches I added to the upper part to the cape too. Because they are both going together for the elastic casing so four inches for the length of the cape plus one and a half inches i have five and a half then the remaining half an inch is to hem the lower part of the cape hope that is explanatory enough so with all this now we can now start sewing up our outfit we are going to start sewing from the trousers you need to know the back and the front. This is the back, this is the front. So first, let me turn this back. So I'm going to make sure the wrong side is facing the lower parts. So this is for the back, because you don't want to make a mistake of mixing it up. So this is the back. Make sure the right side of the front is facing it now. Because the crotch of the back is longer than the front. So that is why I'm taking my time to explain. So this is what I have now. So what I'm going to do is to take half an inch, because that was what we left, half an inch on the side, all down. Coming here, half an inch, can you see? So you have to match it up, because this is longer. Half an inch, you sew it down. Coming over to this point, do the same thing, half an inch, half an inch, before we come to the crotch area. I've sewn it, I've sewn the sides and here, so because the back is longer than the front, that is why I have this. So the next thing now is to match this up, you see, 
So everything is going to match because the front is the same, the back is the same. Can you see? So I'm just going to take half an inch, but, but please on the wrong side. I will have to turn this to the wrong side. Please don't make that mistake. Oh, sorry, on the right side. It's on the right side now. Then I just match it at the lower part and then you take half an inch because that was what we left. Half an inch, then you cross to the other side. And after doing that, you come to this lower part. Remember we left one and half. So now I folded in one and half. So that means you turn it back to the wrong side because you have to fold in half an inch, then you'll be left with one inch to hem it all around. So right now I've sewn it, I've sewn the crotch area and now hem the lower part. So I'm just going to give it a good press. So the lower part is finished. By the time we put elastic, it will be smaller. So right now we'll go over to the upper part. This is the upper part, this is the cape, and this is the top itself. So first I'm going to close it up and notch it. The midpoint here because it will be useful later. I'm going to do the same thing to the cape. Good. What I'm going to do now is to turn this to the wrong side. Remember, we left half inch for this. Make sure you take the required seam allowance as, or else it will be altered. So I'm going to take half an inch here, half an inch, then use the bias strip to finish the ham hole area. Coming over to this on the wrong side, I'm going to take half an inch on both sides to sew it up to have one cape. Then hem the lower part by half an inch. I've sewn the cape, as you can see, I've joined it on the two sides and I've hemmed the lower part. Then looking at the top, I've also sewn the sides and then used a bias strip to finish up the ham hole area as you can see. The next step now is to put the top itself in the cape. Remember we've notched the middle. So all those middle has to match now. The top is in the cape as you can see. Then the notches has to match the top, the cape. Okay, that's good. Then I'll now have to take each armhole and then pin it down because I'm going to run a stitch over that. Here, it's uh, looking at it, I've pinned it all down. Can you see? So what I will do now is this. I'm going to take to the sewing machine and I'm going to run a stitch on this. You can just tack this down here and then you could come down like half an inch to tack it down again but just a stitch is okay just run it over it straight then come here to run it over it so after securing it this way then you will now have to fold remember we left one and half so first you fold half an inch after half an inch then you fold like three quarter or one inch over again as you can see so that will go round it's going to go all around and you see and then i'm going to leave a little opening to pass the elastic right now i folded it in and i'm done with that so looking at the inside can you see after securing it i now have to fold it the half an inch and then three quarter inch so this is the opening i left for the elastic as you can see it's looking beautiful so what i will do before passing the elastic into this is to join to the trousers so if you took the necessary seam allowance you should have everything matching just as mine is as you can see so what do i do since i left half an inch i'm just going to turn it this way So I'm going to take to the sewing machine to sew the half an inch before we fix the elastic. I've sewn it all around the waist area, so bringing it out. 
And you see how beautiful that looks. So this is what we are going to have. So the next thing now is to get an exact waist measurement and cut the elastic to have this. So beautiful. And then some gathers here. I have an elastic band of 18 inches here. Our waist circumference is 20, so I just deducted two from that. What I'm going to do is to use a zigzag stitch to just finish up one side. And after that, I'll have to open up the waist area. So I'm just going to attach one end to one side of the outfit. Then the other end, I can attach it to this other end. And after that, I can keep sewing it all around the waist. So that's what I'm going to do before inserting the upper part. I've attached the elastic as you can see that. So it's looking beautiful. Can you see what I have? So lovely. For the upper part, all I did was to use a chest measurement for the elastic. Her chest measurement is 22. So I cut out an elastic of 22 inches to insert in the upper part and then close the opening. So you can see how beautiful it looks. Can you see? It's just so nice. I'm just going to ask her to put it on for you to see how it looks on her. This is the outfit we've just made. You can see it's so nice. She's so excited to have that. Can you turn to the back? Wow, this is so beautiful. Ensure you make this for your girl.